We have less than a minute. If you are not a city councilor, if you could take your camera off, that would be great. Thank you. I'm going to start the recording. Recording in progress. Good evening. Welcome to the East Hampton City Council meeting for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. The meeting tonight is being recorded and broadcast live via East Hampton Media on Charter Channel 193 and live streamed on East Hampton Media's YouTube channel. All counselors and participants in this meeting are gathered remotely under an executive order by Governor Baker extended to April 2022, which allows us to do so. I remind both the members of the City Council and of the public to remain on mute until recognized by the chair. Also for members of the public, please remove your camera for the duration of the meeting, unless you are participating in public speak or the public hearings. Thank you. This meeting is now called to order. Barbara. Ted Conniff. Here. Salem Derby. Present. Erica Flood. Here. Omar Gomez. Here. JP Kaczynski. Present. Tom Peake. Here. Dan Rist. Here. Lindsay Rothschild here and Owen Zaret. Present. We'll now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance, to allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, peace, liberty, and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of November 17th. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is second for the minutes from November 17th. Any further discussion? Barbara. Ted Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Yes. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zaret. Yes. Okay, and now uh, we are at public speak. For those who would like to participate in public speak, on any topic other than what is in the public hearings, because we will give you a separate opportunity during the public hearings to speak. Remember that the city council may only listen to your comments, but we cannot respond. We ask that you remain respectful and direct your comments only to the city council. If you would like to speak, there's a raise hand function under the reactions option. And we'll ask that you remain on mute and keep your camera turned off. And before commenting, if you could please state your name for the record, your address or your precinct or your town if you are not from East Hampton. You'll have three minutes to make your comments. We have a public hearing at 6.15. So if we have uh, more people that would like to speak, we'll resume after the public hearing. Is there anyone from the public at this time that would like to make any comments? Not seeing anyone, Madam. Okay. All right. It always takes me longer to do that preamble than public speak. Um, before we go into the public hearings, is there any elected official board or committee member who would like to do any communications at this time? Uh, Councilor Zare. Thank you, President Conniff. Um, wanting to wish uh, everyone here, certainly, and in East Hampton, a Chag Chanukah Sameach, a happy, Hanukkah, uh, we're currently about to celebrate, this is the fourth night of the holiday. Um, it's a holiday that uh, celebrates the victory of uh, the then Israelites against the Assyrians uh, who had uh, taken over uh, their holy land and desecrated their temple. Uh, it's a holiday that celebrates victory against few of the many, against the many and uh, as many people are probably aware about the holidays we celebrate for eight nights because um, we had uh, oil in the temple that magically and miraculously lasted for eight nights when we lit it before more could become available. Um, I reflect a lot about this holiday and bringing light into the darkness. I think about the darkness that has enveloped us for closing in on 20 months with this pandemic um, and how we, all of us certainly here on the city council and city government, the city of East Hampton and beyond have 
found ways to bring light into the darkness that, that surrounds us with COVID-19. Um, and some of the little miracles that have happened with coming up with a vaccine um, with such unexpected in such a short period of time. Um, so, and I always think every year too about how there's, um, there's nine candles on the Hanukkah, the Hanukkah menorah, and how there's nine of us sitting here. So we're all here to bring light to each other. Um, this year will be the sixth year of a celebration in East Hampton, um, a community menorah lighting. BYOC, bring your own candles and menorah. Um, typically it's held on the pond, uh, but this year uh, in hopeful anticipation of people coming out because it was held virtually last year, it will be under the tents, uh, the, the ones that are situated near John Bader Park at 50 Payson. Um, that's at 6.30. Uh, there's some stuff going on with uh, the Cottage Street Business Association. There'll be a luminaria up the street and some stores open late, so check those out. Um, anyone who's interested in offering a few words or readings, uh, please um, approach me. This is meant to be a multi-denominational um, uh, event to bring the community together and to share this holiday with everybody. Um, so we'll hope to see you there. Again, that's 6.30. Um, December 4th is Saturday uh, at 50 Payson. Um, and also uh, the night afterwards also is Hubilation. I don't know if that's been um, advertised widely. I believe that kicks off around five o'clock. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rist. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm here to announce uh, for the seven returning councilors our meetings coming up in January as Rule 4A designates me as the presiding officer for the organizational meeting, I wanted to make sure everybody got the email that we are going to have it immediately following this, the swearing in. It will be a Zoom meeting as well as be in person. We'll all wear masks. That will happen at the uh, conference room adjoining the um, dispatch office. There's a conference room there. The swearing in is currently in the fire department uh, station as it was two years ago. Secondly, um, on January 5th, uh, I am setting an agenda with Barbara because unfortunately, that's two days after the council organizes and uh, we need to get an agenda posted by open meeting law. So that agenda will be very limited. The new president won't be in, involved until after January 3rd. That new meeting will be all, uh, the... Uh, simple limited agenda of public speak. Um, the new president will announce committees, but we will have no committee reports. And I ask, the reason I'm announcing this this evening is please do not attempt to schedule public hearings for January 5th as we won't have committees set. So it's important that uh, we allow our new counselors to catch up. And also um, I think it's wise not to have public hearings on that day. So for the mayor and for all of the counselors and current chairs, if um, you need to schedule public hearings, it will have to be on the 19th of January. Um, so that's all I wanted to say, just to give you a heads up on all that. Thank you. Anyone else from elected officials, boards and committees? Right, um, Mayor LaChapelle, we can skip ahead to your communications if you have anything you'd like to say this evening. Yes, um, thank you, President Conniff. Um, I would, we sent out a press release um, around the tax rate and evaluation of, um, for the city and our tax rate for the coming fiscal year will be 1653. That's a dollar and a penny less than the current tax rate. Um, the press release, and I'm not sure I'm actually looking for it. Um, I did not expect to talk so early. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. I, my, I should have been ready at the go. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so. The tax rate, the fiscal year 22 tax rate is $16.53 per thousand of assessment. 
as I said before, it's a reduction of a dollar and one cent from the 21 rate of 1754. There was an increase to residential improvements by approximately 8%, while the same costs remain consistent for commercial, industrial, and personal property, also known as CIP. The land, the value of land in East Hampton remains steady and also unchanged. Though residential values increased by 8%, the increase in the average single family tax bill was only 1.49% or approximately $72. The average CIP, CIP bill was reduced by just over 5% or approximately $476, which we are hoping will assist businesses dealing with the challenges of the pandemic. Um, for a, a side note, um, the total value of all East Hampton property is $1,967,497,770. Um, I will also just remind folks that we're a quarterly billing community. So what's going to happen is that the Next, the tax bills in that coming calendar year 22 will reflect adjustments of the new tax rate. And the first two tax payments were um, preliminary based on last year's tax rate. So I know we, we get a lot of questions and of course my office and the assessor's office more than happy to answer those questions. Um, so that is uh, one thing I'd like to share. Uh, we also got some really exciting news that um, literally hot off the presses from the Lieutenant Governor that the IT department, our city IT department was awarded $135,000 to completely redo the police data collection and software system that will also help EMS and fire. Um, you will see soon on appropriation um, for the remainder of that project out of cannabis, which I find very appropriate and we'll leave to this body when the appropriation goes through. We'll, we're looking right now at needing about another $220,000 to do it in all fell swoop. We've got uh, quotes. It's really a, a nice package and I'll attach it to the appropriation. I'm hoping to get that to this body um, by your next meeting. But uh, the fact that the $135,000 grant was stunning. Um, it was from the Community Compact Grant for IT. It's one of the largest that the city has ever been awarded in this area. Um, hats off to NOAA and our department head, Karin, Dr. Karin, Dr. Karin Kemhort for just really leading on this issue and pulling together a very, very strong, um, a very strong application. Um, and I have one more thing. I'm sorry. Also, we um, starting on Monday, we have uh, made uh, Bree, our health director, has um, put together a relationship with Curative, which is a, a national based testing company, and they'll be doing free COVID testing on Mondays and Thursdays in City Hall, but also at um, Eastworks in front of the RMV on Saturday. Uh, so this is free. You don't have to be an East Hampton resident. You just have to basically get ready to have your nose tickled. Um, I think the testing is we were, we were trying to get testing in the city for a while. Curative, it is free to everyone. If you have an insurance card, they'll ask you for it, but that should not prevent you from getting testing. This is a great opportunity for us to get more data around community transmission and also any of the new variants that are coming out. Um, testing provides so much data. It is really a part of the key mitigation techniques we have along with wearing a mask, um, washing our hands, socially distance, vaccination, and booster. So we've got one more and come get tested. Um, you know, it's not like voting. You actually can test often. Um, so we encourage you to do that. Vote once, test often. Um, and uh, President Conniff, absent questions, that's all I have to share tonight. Anyone from the council have any questions of the mayor? Councillor Kwasinski. Thank, thank you. Uh, 
the question, thank it's great news about the grant, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, very much appreciated uh, to all the staff, kudos. I had a quick question about the COVID testing and just was wondering if like at HCC, will the Eastworks be a drive-through situation or and will if this be outside or will folks have to come inside for the testing? Right now, all the testing um, will happen inside. Councilor Zarek. Uh, thank you. Just a quick follow-up too. I just wanted to clarify, um, this is PCR, it's not rapid testing, is that correct? That is correct. Thank do you. you. Do you know about how quick the turnaround is anticipated on the test mayor? Um, my personal experience, it's within 24 hours. Um, and I think their disclaimer is no more than 72. Um, but I'm not, um, I haven't, yeah. I, I mean, I've been tested at the farmer's market by the same company and have gotten results the next morning at 9 a.m. So, um, you know. That, that's where they, they definitely have their stuff together. I should also mention the results go to, you can get a text or you can get an email for results. This isn't somebody calls you, you have to call them back. Um, it's private. Um, no one in the city, you know, somebody might see you standing there, but your medical information goes nowhere except to curative and then to your email or to text. Great. Anyone else? Councilor Kwasinski. Back again, uh, just with, with regard to texts and emails, that's great for the, everyone who texts and emails on a regular basis, but some people do use the phone. Will they still be using the, the telephone for? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are alternative ways to get a hold of folks, and maybe our health department is going to help with that, depending where the people are from. But Curative did have other options. Um, the big thing is, it's not a lot of people. Um, it was hard. You get a call from a testing site and then oh. you call them back and then, yeah. But I, no, I, I agree a hundred, a hundred percent. It's difficult. I just didn't want to discourage anyone. who. No, no, there's yeah. No matter how you communicate, we'll get you those results in a private confidential way. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else from the council? Okay. I'll take a motion to open the public hearings. Thank you, mayor. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion second to open the public hearings. Any further discussion? Barbara. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Yes. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Ted Connor. Aye. Public hearings are now open. First thing up is a poll location. Councilor Zarrett. Thank you. Uh, this will be uh, potentially a, a, both two quick poll discussions. Um, so we met uh, this past Monday at 6 p.m., I believe, if I'm correct, um, and discussed uh, the two poll uh, items. The first is this 20 slash 30 Ballard Street. Uh, the proposal, I'm just pulling it up here, uh, is to um, uh, install uh, a new poll. This is strictly actually for power, um, but we did discuss reserving a cross arm for um, police and fire signals and um, a further expansion from municipality for communication purposes. This is on Ballard Street, um, where there is potentially a new development going in. Um, and there will also be um, uh, two uh, pad mounted transformers associated with this as well. I could pull up a map if you'd like. Um, uh, so the TLDR version is we met on this and um, the committee recommended three zero in favor to the council to vote in the affirmative on this. Um, however, la yesterday in the afternoon, I received a phone call from a resident on Ballard Street who is um, closely uh, situated to where the digging will likely be um, for the new poll um, and had concerns and there were concerns that I wasn't able to fully answer. Um, and I will, I'll just say for myself personally um, that I would feel more comfortable being able to 
have a discussion with Eversource and have Eversource connect with this resident before we move forward with voting on this. I believe that the digging will not affect this resident, but I couldn't answer that with 100% certainty. And my understanding is that this is not a, um, this is not an urgent issue. Um, and so again, this was recommended three nothing from the committee, but there's a resident with a concern and I would recommend that we, um, uh, we postpone or continue this vote until I can get more answers. I have reached out to Eversource today, but I haven't heard back. I would agree. I would think um, that seems like a, a question we would want an answer to and rather than go through an entire discussion right now and then have to redo it, I'm totally fine with continuing this public hearing until the 15th. Okay, so at this time then, uh, President Conniff, I'd like to make a motion to continue uh, the public hearing for uh, the poll request on Ballard Street until uh, the 15th. Second. Motion second to continue the public hearing for the Ballard Street poll. Any further discussion? Barbara. Erica Flood. Aye. Homer Gomez. Aye. J.P. Gazinski. Yes. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Okay. Next one is on Park Street, Councilor Zarrett. The next one is on Park Street. So this is a proposal to, this is a jointly owned poll. Um, uh, to rec uh, the, the request is to place a jointly owned poll on the west side of Park Street, about 86 feet northerly of the center line of South Street. Uh, this is, this poll would be situated approximately at 22 feet from another existing poll that would stay in place, although I do have to question if that's a temporary poll that we had discussed a few meetings ago, but regardless, um, uh, it currently as it stands, this would place a new poll um, 22 feet um, northerly of an existing poll, uh, right? If you're coming down South Street and look to your left, um, there's already a poll right there on the corner and this would place another poll 22 feet from it. The purpose of this poll is to uh, provide service um, and access to a proposed um, solar field that is potentially going in across the street, uh, which is um, just for informational purposes only and not really part of the discussion here. Um, so the committee met, uh, there were a couple issues with this item. The first being that the schematics that were provided to us um, were an old map of Park Street. And so it did not represent the current roundabout rotary traffic circle, um, what have you. Um, the other question that was raised was that um, whether this poll would cause a visual obstruction to motorists uh, turning um, onto or off of South Street. And for that purpose, um, the committee recommended and came to a consensus that there should be a site visit. Um, and so we're in the process of trying to arrange a mutually acceptable date for that. I believe um, next Friday had been thrown out. Um, we could probably come to that consensus later on during the committee report, if that's okay. Uh, but so um, this item also, um, I would recommend being continued unless there's any questions or urgency to this item from members of the council. I have no objection to continuing the public hearing. Is there any objection to continuing the public hearing? Councilor Rist. Just a question, uh, Councilor Zarek. Does this have anything to do with the new school and is there any delay in any progress on the new school that is affected by this poll? You said it was a solar field. There's nothing, nothing connected to the new school, right? Not to my understanding, Councilor Rist. This, this, um, and, and the, the, the other complication with this too is we were very fortunate to have an Eversource representative who was aware of this, but there was some confusion also as to which poll on South Street we were discussing. Um, and so no, this is, um, I believe this is for a private, a, a, a private solar field that's not related to the school project. So, so my understanding is no, um, but I think we'll, we should be able to wrap this up for the next meeting um, if, that's, if that's acceptable. Okay. I don't see any objection to continuing the public hearing. So um, I'll take a motion. Uh, I'll, I'd like to make a motion to continue the discussion regarding the jointly owned proposal for a jointly owned poll um, on Park Street uh, um, to continue that to the 
the December 15th meeting. Second. second. Motion second to continue the public hearing on the Park Street uh, poll relocation or location uh, to September 15th. Any further discussion? Barbara. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Gazinski. Yes. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Dillam Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. That's too bad. That was the most exciting part of the public hearing I was looking forward to tonight. Uh, oh, well. Um, <laughs> supplemental appropriations, Councilor Rist. Thank you. We have four. The first is a $5,000 appropriation from free cash to the Veterans District budget. As you know, we have a, a, a district with South Hadley. Uh, they are giving $5,000 towards this recertification of the district. Um, and we are matching it with $5,000. This is rather straightforward uh, need for recertification. I see Michael Slattery is here. And first, I want to thank you, Michael, for your help. And the mayor, I don't know if they want to add any comments to this, but obviously, we want our veterans uh, district to be recertified. So <clears throat> we voted three to zero to approve this last evening. Um, Michael, did you want to have it? Did you want to say any words? Uh, at this time during the public hearing? There you are. <laughs> Thank you, President. Um, so yeah, just to, to reiterate on this, this request, um, we currently have 65 clients between the two communities and the importance of the recertification process is to ensure that the city receives back at 75% that it pays out. Um, last year, we had a buffer with COVID is probably the only good thing to come out of COVID. Um, so we had six months to knock out recertification. This year, we don't have that. We have till the end of January, and then that money is going to start getting tied up at the state level. Um, so it's very important that we get this done, um, and contracting with another office is going to make it possible. So that's all I have to say, and, and i just like to thank East Hampton for their support. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for what you do, too, as well. Thank you. Anyone have any questions of Michael or Councilor Rist, or if the mayor has any comments she would like to make? Go ahead, Mayor. Um, yeah, I would just want to underscore um, that one, this isn't adding a, a position. It's specifically to help with the um, recertification in the past. Um, we have, as a city, had some difficulty in challenging ba balancing veteran services and getting recertification, tracking down paperwork, um, and doing that in an untimely manner, which has jeopardized the 75% we're eligible to get back and sometimes has resulted in us actually not getting the 75% back. So the problem solving from um, Mike Slater, as well as the Southampton, uh, I'm sorry, South Hadley, Veterans Council and their district board is much appreciated and we are, we're all the better off for. Thank you, Mayor. Anyone from the council have any comments? Anyone from the public have any comments? Not seeing any, I'll take a motion to approve this appropriation. I move that the full council approve a supplemental appropriation of $5,000. The amount is to be transferred from free cash, $5,000 to be transferred to the Veterans District budget, $5,000, for the purpose contract with Northampton Veterans District for assistance recertifying the South Hadley East Hampton Veterans District clients, matching 5,000 provided by South Hadley. Second. Motion is second for supplemental appropriation for the Veterans District budget. Any further discussion? Barbara. J.P. Kaczynski? Yes. Tom Peake? Aye. Ann Rist? Aye. Lindsay Rothschild? Aye. Owen Zarrett? Yes. Peg Conniff? Aye. Dillon Derby? Aye. Erica Flood? Aye. Omar Gomez? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is $30,000. $30,000 for the libraries. This is coming from the Cannabis Stabilization Fund. This is primarily to, this is discussed this summer. I'll let uh, the mayor and, and I see Marge is here from the library um, update their educational programs. And uh, the Finance Committee voted three to zero, and I welcome this appropriation for the library. So 
start on our uh, any our... I know we have Elizabeth Applequist and the mayor. Elizabeth, would you like to make a comment? Yes, yes, I would. Um, I'm here as the president of the library board. And first, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to consider um, voting to um, pass on the $30,000 appropriation to the library. And um, I wanted to explain that the 30,000 will really help relieve the pressure on our endowment draw. And it will be focused on, on spending that supports normal operations. And we're really looking forward to any future collaborations and discussions that, that we can have with the city on how we can just keep making our, our library even better and just keep improving it. And I think to be honest, our concern is we just want to make sure that the library doesn't end up being an, an afterthought because I, I think we can probably all agree how important it is. And this helps us to really feel heard. So thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mayor, did you have any comments? Yeah, I just wanted to, I mean, of course, the um, the library, uh, we, we did an appropriation around Martin Luther King Day uh, to fund further um, programming out of the, the library around equity and inclusion. Uh, this $30,000 request is specifically to give the library budget some room to, to breathe. It's not a lot, um, but was uh, promised by me to put forth as an appropriation some time ago. So um, apologies for taking so long. Thank you, Elizabeth, for um, uh, the reminder, Marge, the uh, past president, has uh, has instructed you well that the mayor needs a lot of um, uh, reminding. <laughs> um, and while not right on this appropriation, I just um, thank Councilor Zaret and um, Elizabeth and Marge for a work group that's going um, going to be starting up to talk about the future of the library and more stable funding sources. So, yes, it's only thirty thousand dollars, but um, you know, there is a push forward uh, to look at long-term supports for the library out of many different areas. Um, so thank you. I, I appreciate a um, uh, vote in favor of this appropriation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Is there anyone else from the public or actually, let me start with the counselors. Do the counselors have anything they would like to make a comment about? Counselor Zaret. Uh, first of all, uh, President Conniff, a, a big thanks to you and Councilor Rothschild for participating in these discussions around this appropriation, I think I don't. Time means nothing to me, but I think that was springish or summerish that we talked about this. Um, so that was great, and it's good to see great, good use, ongoing good use of our cannabis money um, to uh, items such as our library, which has funding challenges that we're trying to figure out, as uh, the mayor spoke to. Um, so uh, pleased to be assisting in this and to have certainly worked with. Uh, the mayor library, the library committee and, and members of the council um, to get this going and to, to continue to work and we need help. So people should feel free to step to volunteer as well. So, but yeah, great use of our money. Is there anyone from the public who would like to make a comment on this appropriation? Okay, uh, Marge, Marge go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Marge, go ahead. I just want to thank the mayor and the counselors, the three counselors that sat with us and all the counselors that believe in us. We know that we're on the path for good conversation. And I really appreciate the openness, the follow through. Nicole, you are an amazing woman. You got a lot going on. I have no problem nudging you here and there. And I really appreciate the follow through. And I appreciate Elizabeth for being right in front and working side by side with me. So guys, thanks so much for taking the library to a new level of conversation. Thank you, Marge. All right, I don't see any other folks wanting to make a comment. So at this time, I'll take a motion. I move that the full council approve a supplemental appropriation. The amount requested is $30,000 to be transferred from the Cannabis Stabilization Fund, $30,000, to be transferred to the library account, $30,000, for the purpose of funding the resources and funding for the resources and funding for the um, Emily Williston Memorial Library. Second. 
Motion and a second for a supplemental appropriation for the library in the amount of $30,000. Any further discussion? Barbara. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. <laughs> Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. All right, motion passes. Next up is a big number. Go ahead, Councilor Risk. Uh, this is a police uh, personnel services request of $328,771.50. This is primarily related to the contract for the police union, which has recently been signed by the mayor. Um, there are a number of items in here that I'd like to go over, and I'll request that the chief correct me when I misspeak. First, the main item is the base pay is increased for the contract. Secondly, the education incentive is increased. And this education incentive is structured identically to the fire department's recent contract, which I believe we funded uh, in the spring. Um, just so you understand, this is based on the total credits a uh, police officer might receive if they get a degree. It is not a pay as you go get two credits and you get paid. You have to have a degree, an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. Um, there is also a new EMT incentive, which is designed to give officers incentive to get their EMT training. Why? Because normally police officers are the first on the scene, say of a, a, an accident where there may be injuries and they can provide some first aid until the paramedics arrive. The police officers will pay for this training on their own, but if they achieve the certification from the state as EMTs, they will get this incentive. There's also the normal holiday pay as, as is normal to contracts. Second part of this is a, a payout for uh, Officer Bruce Nickel, who is retiring. We don't know when an officer is retiring, so it's very hard to budget for these items. As the mayor indicated last night, she'd rather conservatively budget um, the police department's budget in June, and then come back to us when we have new items such as this or unknown overtime, et cetera. So I'll allow the chief to uh, come back on now and let us know if, there, if I've uh, properly introduced this and also the mayor. Uh, chief Alberti, if you'd like to make a comment. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, counselors. The only, um, Councilor Risty nailed it. The only thing that I would add is in January, um, the police and the um, city negotiated a 5% increase for body worn cameras. And that calculation is already in this police base pay. So I won't be coming back to the counselor um, seeking that 5%. It's already, it's already figured into the base pay. Uh, in addition to that, we uh, just uh, received notice this week that we received a $40,000 grant from the state um, for the body worn cameras. Uh, so that'll be very helpful. Um, but other than that, Councilor Rist, you, you have it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, first, let me, Mayor, did you wanna make any comments before we take questions of the chief? Um, I just, you know, to reiterate what I was saying last night around these big requests, not just police, but fire. Um, I come to the council um, frequently with the department heads, I believe my budgeting strategy is um, that we have when we have unknown costs, uh, but we know we will have costs, I leave them out of the general operating budget, I put in a, a placeholder of like say 100,000. And we know from forecasting past years that it'll be over that. Uh, another great example is snow and ice. I don't like to tie up money in an operating budget when there are so many unknowns where we could perhaps leverage that money for something else like a, a matching grant for infrastructure improvement. I also think that for the sake of transparency, um, departments and the mayor should come back to council with these types of appropriations so they understand what exactly their money is being spent on and how. Uh, some folks have said that it's misleading you, the operating budget, and then these appropriations come through. I find them to be more detailed. 
um, and transparent rather than putting a big plug of money in an operating budget with very little tracking at a city council level. Um, so with, with that, um, thank you for letting me comment. Okay. Um, Chief, can you just clarify something? And, and admittedly, this is probably me. So does, a, does an officer need to have a bachelor's degree before they get the reimbursement or can they get the reimbursement as they go towards their educational reimbursement as they go toward the bachelor's? They have to have achieved it to get the reimbursement? They have to have achieved it and they have to provide uh, the department um, uh, with the necessary paperwork from the, from the um, colleges before I will sign off on it. Okay, thank you, Chief. Councilor Zarek. Um, and please tell me if this is um, out of the purview of this discussion. The, the body cameras, Chief, is that like a pilot program? I thought- I, It understand. actually is, I think, out of the purview <laughs> of this, yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. I'm, I'm eager to discuss it as well. We just can't do it this <laughs> evening. <Thanks. laughs> Anyone else from the council who have any questions about this particular appropriation? Anyone from the public who has any comments about this appropriation? Okay, not seeing any, I will take a motion. Uh, oh, hold on, Shelby and Donovan, go ahead. Hi, uh, Donovan Lee, resident of uh, District 4. I just wanna say uh, as regards to the police officers getting incentive pay for uh, EMS training, I just think that this money could be better spent hiring uh, EMS personnel that could be an employment opportunity for another person in our community. And the more EMS personnel we hire, we could have more dedicated medical personnel responding to medical calls than having police officers respond to medical calls. Uh, people with EMT training uh, are not necessarily great responders unless they are equipped with EMS gear. So uh, I just think this money could be better spent hiring dedicated EMS personnel to get to the scene first rather than police who don't have the correct equipment getting there and that's not their primary role in the situation. Uh, just speaking as uh, a licensed EMT that spent over a year at responding to 911 calls. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone, uh, well, Councilor Gomez. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to add uh, the councilor uh, Red's probably is going to say now, I don't know, but he's forgot about the balance. Uh, the balance is uh, for the cannabis account is 481,942 with 65 cents after these appropriations. Thank you. Actually, thank you, Councilor Gomez. Uh, Hadel, can you update us? You were going to tell us uh, about revenue coming in and what we might have, I know it's 400 and some thousand after this appropriation and we have a number of them under new business tonight, but did we get a new revenue uh, increase in cannabis stabilization today? You said something about that last night. Yes, um, we have received a revenue in November and that is $87,035.35. And, $87, so that after these two appropriations, um, our balance is at $568,978. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you for getting us. Any other comments from anyone? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a thumbs up, Councilor Derby. Uh, <laughs> I will take a motion um, to approve. I move that the full council approve a supplemental appropriation. The amount requested is $328,771.50 to be transferred from the Cannabis Stabilization Fund to be transferred to the following accounts. They all have the same first numbers, so I'll read the, sec the last number. The 5111 account, $39,294.96. The 5142 account, $237,257.75. The 5144 account, $18,186.33. Um, the 5151 account, 
and the 5153 account, $22,814.35, and the 5156 account, $10,670.10. For the purpose of providing funding for the additional costs of the FY22, FY24, two FY24 police union contract, and for the payout of Sergeant Bruce Nichols' retirement. Second. Motion and a second for the supplemental appropriation for the police uh, contract. Any further discussion? Barbara. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Melissa Siggy. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peake. Aye. Motion passes. Next one, well, Council The last appropriation is $17,680.35 to uh, support our urban grant uh, deficit. Um, and I'll ask the mayor to correct me, but I think and I'm going to state all this so that I understand it better. The, uh, we received a $25,000 grant to fund the Blueprint East Hampton initiative by the mayor, which helps entrepreneurs and businesses those grants were handed out and there was supposed to be another $25,000 grant uh, with the deadline of June 30th. The mayor believed that the, the uh, appropriate, I'll use the term uh, grants that we were giving to the local entrepreneurs was sufficient to get that grant, but apparently the state changed the rules and that wasn't sufficient. So now we're not getting that second $25,000 grant and we owe these entrepreneurs a reimbursement of all of the participants in this uh, program. So this is to, to cover for those reimbursements we were supposed to use the grant for. Mayor, please correct any of that. I hope I understood it correctly. No, that, that's exactly what, what happened. Um, the, uh, we, had the, we had to spend $25,000 by June 30th we accounted for that $25,000, but 5,000 of it was not in the actual possession of the entrepreneur who was granted that. And the state did not accept that as proof of meeting the grants goals to spend. Um, in the past, we've actually had several grants where we've asked for an extension because something literally wasn't delivered, uh, wasn't going to be delivered. And um, that exception did not apply to this grant. Um, I take full responsibility for that. That was $5,000, but the rest of it is, was anticipation of getting the, 20, the second $25,000. And we did not, which increased um, the deficit in the grant um, line item. The, so I'm asking for the difference for one, the 5,000 we didn't spend in time and then the 17, I mean the, the rest of the amount for what we didn't get in the second part of the grant. Um, as I said last night at committee, um, I take full responsibility for not minding the requirements of this grant and reading the five print and uh, making the assumption that we could get an extension, especially in the face of COVID. Um, I was wrong. Uh, but also the money that I'm asking for goes directly to reimburse these entrepreneurs who bought the equipment like purchase of sales and printers um, and computers to further their business activities. So they're waiting on reimbursement, not a public concern with public dollars, my fault, but I did wanna put their out there and, um, and thank them all for their, their patience um, and participating in our first cohort. And the, the finance committee voted three to zero to support this and to support these entrepreneurs. Any questions from uh, the counselors? Any comments from the public? Okay, seeing none, I'll take a motion. I'm getting off easy tonight, Madam President. I, I move that the full council approve a supplemental appropriation. The amount requested is $17,688.35 to be transferred from free cash, $17,688.35, to be transferred to the UA grant account, 17,688.35.
the amount requested for the purpose for the urban agenda grant deficit to city council in the amount of 17,688.35. This amount includes PO received to date in the audit department. Second. second. Motion and a second for a supplemental appropriation to backfill, if you will, the UA grant uh, fund. Any further discussion? Barbara. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Dillum Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Okay, motion passes. I'll take a motion to close the public hearings. So moved. Second. second. Motion second to close the public hearings. Any further discussion? Barbara. Uh, Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Uh, aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peak. Aye. Tom uh, Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. All right. Public hearings are now closed. Uh, we've concluded some business prior to the start of the public hearing, so we'll move right into standing committee reports. Finance, Councilor Rist. Yes, uh, the Finance Committee met last night and you heard the results of that. We will meet again, and this is a different time, Tuesday the 14th to accommodate Councilor Conniff's being away. So that's right before the next meeting. So Tuesday the 14th at five o'clock, I'm hoping, um, all of the necessary participants can meet at that time. There are a number of new business items this evening, which will be on the docket for that evening. Um, the first item, I'm, I'm now gonna move a bunch of items to new business. The first item does not need a public hearing. I move that the CPA change of scope request for Payson Avenue and the rail trail crossing design construction drawings be moved to the finance committee for review. Second. Motion is second to move the CPA interdepartmental transfer to the Finance Committee. Any further discussion? Barbara. Uh, Peg Conniff. Yes. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Yes. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rest. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Now I will move the following items to be sent to Finance Committee and to um, set a public hearing for December 15th. Uh, I'll make that as a motion and then someone can second when I'm done reading. The first item is an interparkable transfer from the CPA, $255,576 to be transferred from the old town hall, second floor construction retained city match, 255,576 to be transferred to the old town hall, second floor construction project. 255576 for the purpose of construction phase one, HVAC improvements, boiler replacement, and building and electrical upgrades. The next item is an interdepartmental transfer of $53,000 to be transferred from the PEG access account, $53,000 to be transferred to the PEG access account, $53,000 to give approval to spend from the PEG access receipts res reserved account for cable related purposes consistent with the franchise agreement. The next item is a supplemental appropriation. The amount requested is $1,324 to be transferred from free cash, $1,324 to be transferred to account 111F work, workers comp account, $1,324 to be used for the following purpose for fire and police accident and sickness policy renewal remaining balance unanticipated expense in FY22 budgeting. The next item is a supplemental appropriation. The amount requested is $14,730 to be transferred from free cash, $14,730 to be transferred to the school work workers comp account, $5,675 and the city workers comp account, $9,055 for the following purpose for workers comp employee coverage policy renewal remaining balance, unanticipated expense in FY22 budgeting. The next item is a supplemental appropriation of $27,000 to be transferred from free cash, to be transferred to city archival records project phase three, $27,000 
for the following purpose. To complete phase three of the city's records management project, funding will cover labor and materials to continue records work at the public safety complex and council on aging. It will also include funding to cover the allowable destruction of records in accordance with state municipal records retention schedule. The next item is the supplemental appropriation of $27,462.13 to be transferred from the cannabis, cannabis impact account to be transferred to the individual employee wage accounts listed in the amounts listed in the last column of the attached spreadsheet, which is the pay plan spreadsheet, $27,462.13 to increase income to keep up with the rising cost of living and increase in minimum wage for our employees. CRC supplemental. The following supplemental appropriation is $10,000 to be transferred from the Cannabis Stabilization Fund, $10,000 to be transferred to the Community Relations Committee support, $10,000 for the following purpose, educational public forum budget. Next item, a supplemental appropriation amount requested $150,000 to be transferred from cannabis, $150,000 to be transferred to legal services easement Union Street Corridor, $150,000. The amount requested will be used for the following purpose, to cover the cost to acquire temporary and permanent easements for the Union Street TIP project. Next item is uh, a $1,400 uh, supplemental appropriation to be transferred from free cash, $1,400 to be transferred to central purchasing postage, $1,400 for the following purpose, to incorporate postage for retirement board into central purchasing postage budget. The next item is a Community Preservation Act uh, request a supplemental appropriation of $5,730 to be appropriated from CPA Reserve for Historic Resources. <coughs> Excuse me, $5,730 to be appropriated to the Park and Rec Historical Designations, $5,730 for the purpose of hiring a consultant to prepare National Register of Historic Designation forms for the Daily Field Stone House Bathroom, Brookside Cemetery Building, and the Brookside Cemetery Grounds. The following is also a Community Preservation Act supplemental appropriation request for $14,600 <coughs> to be appropriated fund, the CPA Reserve Fund, $10,412, and the super CPA Undesignated Fund, $4,188, for a total of $14,600 to be appropriated to the Nonatuck Pool Restoration Design, $14,600 for the following purpose. For Nonatuck Park Pool Facility Restoration Design Phase, hire consultants to access pool infrastructure and design improvements to the surrounding area, including ADA accessibility. I believe that's all of them. I move that these be set to Finance Committee and set for public hearing on December 15th. Second. Motion to second for all of the aforementioned appropriations to be moved to finance and set for public hearing. Any further discussion? Barbara. Salem Derby? Aye. Erica Flood? Aye. Omar Gomez? Aye. JP Kaczynski? Yes. Tom Peak? Aye. Dan Rist? Aye. Lindsay Rothschild? Aye. Owen Zarrett? Yes. Peg Connick? Aye. Madam President, that concludes. Thank you, Councillor Rist. Um, Oh, question, uh, just, this is just a question. Is the CPA change of scope request a finance thing or is that going to? I just moved it to finance before. Oh, did you? Um, I must yeah. have dozed off during that, my apologies. It is a finance thing. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, all right, thank you, Councilor Riss. Councilor Gomez, Public Safety. Thank you, Madam President. Um, our last meeting was November 16th, so we didn't have any meeting after the full city council meeting but we schedule our next meeting for December 7th at 7 p.m. And we have a new uh, business that I wanna move to public safety. I wanna move to public safety committee for the agenda item quarterly fire department reports. Second. Okay. Motion, motion and second to uh, create an agenda item for fire department quarterly reports. Any further discussion, Barbara? Erica Flood? Aye. Omar Gomez? Aye. JP Kaczynski? 
Aye. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Meg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Yeah, motion passes. That concludes. Thank you, Councillor Gomez. Appointments, Councillor Rothschild. Um, so there's 32 reappointments. Can I move them in one package? <laughs> Yes. And then there's one appointment. Uh, no, there's there's 32, two really? news and 31. Oh, no, the one at the very beginning. There. So 31, right? And two Three new appointments. And then two new ones. Yes. So can I move the two, the 31 reappointments altogether? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll move. Move the other two together. So I'd like to move the, I move to move the 31 mayoral reappointments to the appointments committee. I'll second. Motion second to move the 31 mayoral appointments to the appointment committee. Any further discussion? Barbara. Peg Conniff. Yes. Dillam Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarek. Yes. Okay, motion passes. And then also move to move the following two mayoral appointments to the appointment committee, Robert Newton to the Aquifer Protect Protection Committee with a term expiration 12-31-2022 and E. Maud Hack Frenchko, might be saying that wrong, to the ECA committee with a term ending 12-31-2023. Second. Motion second to move two new mayoral appointments to the appointment committee. Any further discussion? Barbara. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Yes. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Hey, Conniff. Aye. Great. And uh, so our next meeting is we had agreed to the second Wednesdays of month of the month. So it's Wednesday, December 8th at 4 p.m. And yeah. thus concludes. Thank you. Ordinance, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ordinance Committee met last night. Uh, we had a very interesting discussion on 7 Groveland Ave, um, which is the gateway to highway business. Um, and we are actually going to be uh, doing a site visit on December 11th, which is a Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, to walk the property, to take a look at the potential impact of uh, rezoning that parcel or part of that parcel potentially. Um, and so that is um, upcoming. Uh, we also have a joint public hearing that is coming up on the 14th at 6 p.m. with the planning board where we're gonna be discussing the 40R Smart Growth Overlay District. Um, and then we also have a, another meeting scheduled for the 21st at 6 p.m. Um, where we're going to uh, dive into the empty storefront ordinance and uh, also look at the Juneteenth ordinance as well. So we're going to do double duty that night. Uh, and it doesn't look like I have any housekeeping to do. So um, if it pleases the president, thus concludes. Thank you, Councillor Derby. What what day was that meeting that that last one? Uh, twenty first. Twenty first. Okay, sorry. Yep. And property, Councilor Zare. Thank you. Um, we already discussed the two poll location requests. Um, those uh, public hearings have been continued. Um, uh, if for the two committee members present, I, I know we had discussed um, potentially scheduling a meeting for a site visit. Uh, for the Park Street location, um, have either of the counselors in the interim had an opportunity to, to drive by the location, um, which could potentially uh, obviate the need for an actual site visit? Uh, yes, I indeed had a chance to go through there today. And um, my one comment is I really wish that the map that was provided was more up to date because it was quite inaccurate. There are a number of poles directly in a line. So just given what I saw today and the information we were provided with, I think an updated map would go a long way. I don't necessarily see another poll adding any limitations on sight lines just because there's far more there than were represented on the map. So my concerns about sight lines um, today were removed, but I would 
I would like to see an updated map just for the public's reference and for other counselors. So that's my one comment. Councilor Kuzinski, um, do you, uh, I'm, I'm certainly happy to entertain a site visit. Um, do you feel that we need one? Do you want to drive by like Councilor Flood did? I'd be happy to drive by perhaps even tomorrow and have uh, a look and then if I feel a need to for the site visit, I will text you. Sounds perfect. Um, so, but I'm sorry. And I just said, and we can schedule something. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So we absolutely do need an updated map for that item. And so um, I will do my best to obtain one uh, prior to the next meeting. Um, I We also have continuing business of the a uh, boundary line agreement with the owner of uh, 99 Hendrick Street. This is an item uh, where uh, uh, this, uh, the Daigle uh, family owns a parcel that borders on our uh, water plant on Hendrick Street. And there's some easements involved um, and we need to continue to discuss this. Um, so I, I would like to be able to do that prior to the next meeting. So. Um, I will send an email out after this meeting to the committee members to try to uh, get something together so we can um, uh, successfully, hopefully, have public hearings on those poll locations, uh, as well as uh, as as uh, discuss the the boundary line and get this wrapped up. Um, and I will uh, ask Eversource again for an appropriate map for uh, for um, Park Street. Um, and I'm just looking here. Uh, Actually, nope, with nothing else here. So thus concludes. Thank you. Councilor Peak, Rules and Government Relations. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, would it be your, uh, am I inferring correctly that we should be sending the uh, calendar to rules or do you want to just vote on that tonight or? My uh, preference would be to vote on it tonight if there are no objections from okay. the council. Any so objections from the council to vote on the calendar for next year? Okay, then go ahead. Okay, then I'll make a motion to accept the proposed calendar for next year's city council meetings. Second. Motion is second to approve the city council meeting calendar for next year, 2022. Any further discussion? Barbara. Um, Erica Flood. Yes. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peake. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. This is just to move it correctly, correct? Yeah, we're voting to approve it. Oh, the calendar? Yep. Oh, there's a, conf there's a conflict with the Jewish holiday. Okay, we can amend uh, it right now. Okay, I'm sorry, I was, um, let me pull that up. It's the first October meeting, I believe. Um, oh, I think it's October 5th, am I correct? Should I, should, should I re yeah. retract if, if, my motion then? Yeah, it, the motion in a second, if all agreed, please remove your motion in a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll retract my motion. And who did the second? I, that was Councillor Derby. Okay. All right, go ahead, Councillor Zarek. Uh, I'm just looking here. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find it in, again in the, uh, oh, there it is. Um, it's under 2022 calendar. It's really confusing. Um, uh, Wednesday, October 5th is Yom Kippur. I don't know how this lunar holiday seems to find its way into our uh, conflict with our um, uh, calendar every year, but um, I certainly won't attend the meeting and I would request that the, the council consider moving that, that meeting if possible. Is there any suggestions on which week to move it to the 12th, which would then necessitate back-to-back -back city council meetings or forward to September 28th, which would also necessitate back-to-back -back city council meetings. Councilor, what, Councilor Rist? I'm gonna raise this question. It is a very major Jewish holiday and I respect that. Um, but what happens when other, if we have a lot of holidays that come up, although they haven't in the past, I wouldn't uh, move Roman Catholic holidays, although sometimes the, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday falls on a Wednesday with a council meeting, for instance, but I don't think it compares to Yom Kippur. 
I don't have any objection to this, but it concerns me. So I don't know, you know, separation of church and state. But on the other hand, it is a very important holiday, and I, I think that's something we should consider. I, so, I, I just, I'm just confused. I yeah, mean, no, that's, uh, troubled that's, by it, that's all. That's fine. Um, I, I, I'm going to just weigh in here and say that I think it goes beyond just the folks on the council, that it, it speaks to the transparency and the ability of the public there to attend go. our meetings. And if they are worshiping or servicing or having a, a holiday, in the middle of that, it kind of limits their ability to participate in government. And I think to the degree that we can make that easier, and this seems like an easy fix, we can entertain changes like we're doing right now as they come. And I have, in my six years, I've never seen a change to any other holiday. And so I think this is completely warranted. Uh, I have Kuzinski. to agree that has relieved my- Hang on, Dan, Dan, Dan hang on. Uh, Councilor Kwasinski, go ahead, JP. Uh, I uh, agree with uh, President Conniff. Uh, I, I think that we should amend the calendar. And I was going to suggest that if it's appropriate, would, would, it, would a Tuesday or a Thursday meeting work for anyone? Uh, rather than to try to have back-to-back -back meetings to continue with the separation of a couple of weeks generally, uh, but do it to, we used to meet on Tuesdays all the time. And I believe uh, Councillor Derby uh, had a conflict with uh, a, a school commitment uh, and uh, we had changed from Tuesdays and now it's Wednesdays. Uh, so as long as it's published and the public knows well in advance and we can announce it a, for a couple of meetings, I wouldn't have any problems with that provided it didn't interfere with the uh, religious holiday. Thank you, JP. Uh, Councilor Riss. I want to thank you, Madam President, because that was an incredibly valid point, and it certainly raised, relieves, relieves my objections. And I also agree with Councilor Krasinski that Tuesday would be better. We have often had public hearings, for instance, and they need time to be scheduled. So putting back-to-back -back council meetings does restrict our, our work. So I would agree to having it the Tuesday before, I guess, October 4th unless there's some other reason not to. I think that's better. Barbara Barbara might have an objection, but yep. anyway, I like two weeks between. Okay, Councilor Peek. I'm actually really interested in what uh, Barbara and Councilor Zaret have to say, so I will- uh, Barbara? Back. Um, two, Tuesdays um, are not particularly good days. We've got school committee and planning board that both meet on Tuesdays. I can't remember what week they are, but if we're back in person- How about Thursday? Um, I, I think Thursday would be better. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm on. Councilor Zaret? I was going to recommend Thursday just because of the way that the holidays work with sundown and okay. such. Okay. All right. So um, if someone would like to make a motion to approve the amended city council calendar for 2022 with the change from October 5th to Thursday, October 6th, I'll take that motion. So moved. Take it. Second. Motion is second for an amended city council meeting calendar. Any further discussion? Councilor Zaret. I just want to thank the council for their ongoing um, uh, sensitivity to the Jewish holidays. And certainly it's not a majority religion in East Hampton, but it's, it's not unusual practice in other municipalities. And, and I would just say also certainly if another faith brought forward a concern about a conflict with um, uh, uh, one of our meetings, I, I would certainly entertain it as well. So thank you for the the ongoing thoughtful discussion and um, we'll see what the lunar calendar brings us for 2023. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So we're taking a vote. Sorry. Go ahead, Barb. Omar Gomez. Aye. JP Kaczynski. Aye. Tom Peak. Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zaret. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Okay. Great. Motion passes. Anything and, else, Councilor Peak? Uh, no, the only thing on our agenda is something that I don't think we're we're not ready to move forward on. I don't think there's anything else we're introducing. We haven't met yet, so I have. Uh, I months. just have a request. What's that? Um, since I am leaving the council and I am the clerk of the rules, mm -hmm. and I have finished minutes that are not approved, can we have a five-minute meeting in the next two weeks to approve those minutes so I can be 
everything can go out like unencumbered. That sounds great. Uh, I will text you both to just figure out what the best time to do a okay. five minute meeting is. But if it's only five minutes, pretty much any time should probably. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Um, the only uh, other thing. I, I saw De De uh, Councillor Rist raised his hand. For a Just thought that since Councillor Conniff, uh, uh, you're going to be out of town. So never mind. Has to be. Uh, before. Yeah, you got to work in my vacations now, which are coming rapidly and frequently. So. So, Tom, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work. You will both hear from me momentarily. Um, and the only other be. thing is the ad. Oh, thanks, Tom. The only other thing is the ad hoc committee and JP. Um, you can certainly do it next meeting, but there's the open question of continuing this committee, although it will expire at the end of the year if you do nothing. So we can we can still have that discussion next meeting. I look forward to that. <laughs> Thank you. So it, can I just ask you, is there something that you want to continue about that meeting? Because I don't think any of the members are actually still in it. Is there something you, you were concerned about by disbanding it? Well, the concern here was that there be sufficient support for administration of the program. And with the change of personnel in the uh, enrichment center, uh, there, there's been it's it, it, there's there's a, a learning curve and I want to be sure this all gets off the ground and that we provide the support necessary and that it wouldn't become a burden for the administration of the city uh, and so I think the council has a role in that regard to help smooth the process yeah, I agree. and it is I a agree. pilot I... program that I think has some uh, I think has gone very well but I'd like to be able to summarize that and, uh, okay and I I'll just suggest that with the departure of so many members of that committee, um, that you certainly have the opportunity to reseat it next year uh, with a different mix, which I imagine it will require, it will need to be a different mix because mostly everybody has moved on. Um, so keep that in mind that while if we disband this committee, you can and the president can name a new committee next year for the ongoing operational issues of the senior tax work off program. So I'll leave that up to you, but I just throw that out there as an option. Thank you. All right. New business, old business. I think we're done. I will take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. So eager. <laughs> motion in a second. Barbara? JP Kaczynski? Aye. Tom Peak? Aye. Dan Rist. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. Owen Zarrett. Yes. Peg Conniff. Aye. Salem Derby. Aye. Erica Flood. Aye. Omar Gomez. Aye. Great. Everybody have a great evening. Take care. <laughs>